It's got a fall state umbrella. I'm being solo. I'm actually surprised. Mm -hmm. I thought he had a posse. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Hi, Isaac. Hey, how are you? Yes, you're doing okay. Yeah, thanks for coming. Yeah. Exciting stuff. Very exciting. Uh, pretty big class, or? Um, yeah. Okay. 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 But actually, we have the first time we've ever seen the show part, which is in May. So, yeah. 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 Awesome. Yeah. Hi. 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 Yeah, my kids are the kids. Yes, yeah, so they're the yeah. podium here. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Oh, awesome. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Administration Technology and Security Program under the Voting System Technical Oversight Program. A mouthful. I am delighted to welcome you all to the graduation ceremony for the fourth cohort of the SEATS program. I would like to thank you all for being here today to celebrate the hard work and dedication of the cohort four participants. We expect this event will last approximately two hours. Before the ceremony begins, I'd like to ask that you all turn your cell phones to silent. During today's celebration, we will be hearing a brief statement from the Honorable Indiana Secretary of State, Diego Morales, followed by the remarks of by Ball State University President Jeffrey Merck. We will also be hearing from the BSTOP co-directors, Drs. Jay Baga and Chad Kinsella, and finally from a guest speaker who is also a SEATS graduate. After these opening remarks, we will transition to the commencement ceremony and presentation of certificates and capstone projects. Now it is with my great pleasure that I turn it over to Indiana's 63rd Secretary of State, the Honorable Secretary of State Diego Morales for his opening remarks. Well, good morning. Good morning. It's an honor to be here at Ball State uh, today, uh, home of the Cardinal, Mr. President. Uh, so good to, to see you this morning, uh, President Merms. Thank, thank you for your leadership. Thank you for all you do. You know, so good to be here. I was just talking when I arrived here with uh, Dr. Baga, and I said thank you, uh, Doctor, for your leadership uh, of this program, much appreciated. And you know, I would be remiss not to acknowledge uh, my bosses in the room here. I do have a boss, actually. You know, my good friend, David Berry, the county clerk <laughs> of Wayne County. <laughs> Good. We have our new county clerk, Amy, from San Jose County. Amy, so good to see you, my friend. And of course, we have Dave Shelton from Knox County. So, you know, I, I don't, I don't brag on anything else, but I can tell you what I brag on. One thing is that I do know all 92 counties by the back of my head. That I, no one can take that away from me. I do know your state very, very well. You know, when I took over. Uh, three months and a half ago. So far, we have visited 42 counties, 42 counties in three months and a half, working very diligently for all of you. So for those of you who may not know me, my name is Diego Morales. I'm Indiana Secretary of State and the proud first Hispanic Latino Secretary of State in the history of Indiana. 
in the first legal immigrant secretary of state in the nation. Now, DLD does not progress. But for those of you who like to you know, talk about progress, DLD does not progress here from Indiana. Now, uh, today I'm here for two reasons. Only two, okay. Number one, to say congratulations to the new certificate in election administration technology and security program graduates. It's quite a title and quite an accomplishment. So congratulations. Number two, to say thank you to the voting system technical oversight program, Vista. Thank you for all what you do here in our state of Indiana. You know, this is a, an incredible partner to our office, and we want to thank you for that. Not only to our office, but also to our partners with the Indiana Election Division, with the Election Commission, and to with all counties all across the state. So thank you for all you do. Vista helps with so much from voting system certification services to audit reviews. Virtually on everything, if you actually like to think, you know, you are, you are involving everything. But I want you to know that now more than, more than ever, we know that elections are looking very, very closely. And you all know that. So you will play a critical role. Is everybody's watching? Everybody's watching on our elections. And I usually tell others, you as the county clerk, as the leadership here at this staff, you play a critical role. You run your elections in your counties the way you're supposed to be running it. So these 42 counties that I've been visiting when I meet with county clerks, and if I haven't been in your county yet, let me assure you, I'm on my way. My number one priority is to share with the county clerks to tell me what are the tools and resources you need so we can help you. You have to tell me what are those tools and resources, otherwise I would not know. And number two, to listen. Because you all are the backbone of our elections. You know, as the chief election officer, one of my main jobs is to get people to vote, right? I cannot tell you that is uh, one of my top priorities. In fact, one of my key priorities is to increase voter turnout. We must do a better job here in Indiana to do that. This summer, we will be setting up shop at the Indiana State Fair to make sure we register voters. At the same time, I'm partnering with county clerks to make sure that we will do this in all 92 county fairs so we can increase voter turnout. That is critical, if you ask me. One of the other things that I'm actually working on is reaching out to our minority community. As a minority myself, as a Latino myself, it's important for me to reach out to them so we can register them to work and they can be part of the process, of the election process. So we have an opportunity now to be the leader, and I want Indiana to be that leader and to live all across the nation. But I cannot do it alone. So I need you county clerks. I need you this staff. I need all of you. But at the end of the, of the day, it's all about our community. One more last thing. I'm reaching out to our students. In fact, I've been going to high school students. And I asked them actually, how many of you will turn 18 or will be 18 by election day? Maybe one or two. Then I asked them, how many of you would you like to get out of school on election day? Everybody's like, me, 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 where do I sign? And then I said, do you know that you can become a full worker? You can get paid, you can get fed, you get some experience, and then most importantly, you get out of school. If they're like, yes, me, where do I sign? So it is time to start recruiting the next generation of teachers, not only to register to vote, to become poor workers, but also college students. 
One of my goals is to start visiting higher education institutions such as Fort State, so we can encourage our fellow coaches to be part of the process. So congratulations again to all the graduates. I'm really looking forward to learning about your individual study projects. And thank you for your commitment. And I look forward to, not only to this class, but to the next one. I already know some of the students for the next class as well. So I look forward to seeing the next class. And uh, I finish with this. Please come and see us in the State House. That is your State House. That is your Secretary of State's office. They always tell people that is the people's house. After all, I work for you, the people. So come and see us and let us know how we can help. We are here to listen and we are here to serve. So thank you again. Um, so good to see you all in this rainy morning. So thank you. God bless you all. And uh, looking forward to working with all of you. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Diego Morales, for your thoughtful words and for attending today's graduation ceremony. I will now direct the mic to President Jeffrey Mertz. Thank you, Elisa. Good, Good morning. It is always my good fortune today to serve as the president of Ball State. I own this mic. <laughs> what am I doing? All right. Thank you. And good morning, Secretary Morales. Thank you very much for your service and thank you for joining us and look forward to welcoming you back to campus. This is the only day of the year that it rains here in Munson. That's not a good idea to you. It'll be sunshine. I know we have a few other special guests. I know you brought, uh, you brought some of your staff with you. I understand that also Jay Phelps, who's the Director of Election, um, election Supporting <coughs> Technology Evaluation for the U.S. Election Assistance Commission, that's an apple too. And also I understand that we have some members of our first cohort who are here to support uh, the graduates of this cohort program. So thank you all uh, for joining us. Also grateful to my colleagues who are the co-directors <coughs> and staff here at VSAP. They are working very hard to coordinate and provide exceptional training to the women and men who the secretary said are really on the front line of the administration of our, our elections. And grateful to all of the stakeholders and partners who support us here at Ball State and support us uh, here at VSTAP. You know, our university is proud. It really is. We have an honor to be the only program in the state aimed exclusively at ensuring the security of our state's elections. That is an honor, and it is also a very important responsibility and one that we take very seriously, and we're grateful for the ability to partner with your office. Um, it is also, in my estimation, very impressive, even compelling, that a small group of public policy researchers who are here at Ball State will continue to work to advise the Indiana Election Commission and the Secretary of State on a wide variety of election-related topics beyond this partnership, and it's certainly just one example of what we do. And speaking of pride, I hope that all of you who are completing this program are very proud of your achievements and we look forward to your continued service to the state. And that's the reason we're all here today. So congratulations to all of you for completing the program and congratulations on your special achievement. Good luck. Thank you, President Burns, for attending today and providing remarks to help welcome our guests and celebrate their accomplishment. Please help me welcome the VSTOP co-directors to conclude the introduction. Thank you, Lisa. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Jay Baga, and I'm a co-director of the VSTOP program and a professor of computer science here at Ball State. Well, let me begin by thanking uh, Honorable Secretary Morales and all state president of Burns for their kind remarks. And we are pleased to extend a very hearty welcome to both of you and thank you. And we hope that you'll come back and see us again. 
I have been associated with B Star since the very beginning as a co director, since the program began in about 2007. B Star is celebrating the completion of 16 years of service to the state of Indiana and to Ball State University. We, along with Drs. Ray Shealy, Sally Joe Vasico, <coughs> and Joe Losco, and these are emeritus professors in the political science department. Uh, we all started the program with a gracious grant from the Indiana Secretary of State's office back then. We have enjoyed our close working relationship with the Secretary's office, the Indiana Election Division, the Indiana Election Commission, and all of their staff. In the last 16 years, we staff has proudly served the state of Indiana and the election officials in the 19 Indiana counties. One of the major activities of we staff is the certification of voting systems and elect, elect, electronic poll books for the state of Indiana. Now that's a very complex uh, enterprise. Uh, there's an entire set of protocols that these voting systems and other election systems have followed, along with federal and state statutes. And uh, we are proud to say that we start created a certification protocol for electronic poll books which was one of the first such in the country. And other states have emulated that program. And we are happy about that. Another one of our activities is the state, the certificate, the SEEDS program, the Certificate in Election Administration Technology and Security. Our first cohort began in 2018, and now we are proud to see our fourth cohort graduate today. We could not offer this opportunity without the continued support from the Indiana Secretary of State's office. For this, we are grateful to you, Honorable Secretary. The space we are in today is a testament to the dedication and support for these staff shared by the state and all state university. Let me talk for a minute about the enterprise of elections. What one could take the perspective of the general public, that's the front end of elections. So at that end, the public sees campaigns. Of course, they go and vote on voting machines. They register first on the electronic poll books and then the vote. And then they wait for the results and then they get the results. And this happens about every two years. That's the front end. But that's only one side of the coin, the simpler side. If you look at the other side of the coin, it's a hugely complex enterprise that goes on always. The preparation of election does not happen once every two years. It happens 24-7, every day of the year, every year. And our seats graduates are among the people who make that happen. And that's why we are so happy and proud to be associated with these election officials not only in the state of Indiana, but with others, with EAC and several other stakeholder, stakeholders and partners. And that one, that enterprise, the, the other side of the coin is, as I said, hugely complex. It involves a large number of activities that go on before the voting machines are ready to be put in the election rules where the public so that, that's, the, that, that's the enterprise that we can, given an hour or two, I can talk more about that later. <laughs> uh, so the SEEDS program has national prominence since it's been shared with you, with several of you, and with others around the country. The, the SEEDS and the VSTOP programs have received national awards, honoring best practices in election administration and the training. And these awards came from the U.S. Election Assistance Commission, ESC. At this point, I'm very happy to introduce our East Talk team. And I'll call these names out. Please stand and then uh, uh, please join me in, in uh, appreciating their work at the end. Uh, Liz Beatrice is the program manager 
for the restart. Mark Chateau is the certification specialist for the restart. Duncan Clem is our IT specialist. Rachel Alanis is our project specialist. Ethan Rice is a graduate assistant who helps in several ways uh, from the Department of English, I believe. Yes. Uh, Sean uh, Donaldson is a student worker from computer science who is helping uh, Duncan and others. And a very special thanks to Lisa Gray or Alisa Gray. Uh, our graduate assistants for the SEEDS program. She is the one who keeps SEEDS a very well oiled machine and makes it run. So, thank you all. <laughs> Additionally, uh, I would also like at this point to introduce my colleague and uh, the other co director of the staff, uh, Dr. Jack Kinsella. Right? <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Baca. Good morning. Um, so my name is Dr. Chad Kinsella. I'm a co-director also of VSTOP. I'm also an associate professor of political science, uh, director of the, the Bowen Center of Public Affairs, uh, among many of the other different things. Um, it's been a pleasure um, to be a part of such a wonderful and meaningful program um, and to be a part of today's dedication. Um, another activity that VSTOP introduced to Indiana is post-election audits. And we have worked with national experts and conducted several post-election audits here in Indiana. We've worked with the counties. We got to go visit Wayne County here uh, in December, and we had a great time. I'm a deputy. It seemed like we did. Uh, my first, my first uh, post-election audit was uh, in Elkhart County. And that, that, we, that was a lot, lot learned, but it was good. I always loved Elkhart County. It's a special, special place in my heart. And, um, that was a tough one, but we got it done. But, not anything wrong, but it was just uh, we had close race and it just took a lot of time. Um, anyway, so that's one of the things that we do. The, uh, one of the other things that we do. So, um, so also the certification um, program seats that, that uh, Dr. Baga mentioned is, is particularly special for us since both Dr. Baga and I are, are educators at heart. Um, so those are, we, we really enjoy trying to you know, be a part of, of teaching. So it's been fulfilling to, uh, to, to be able to make an impact with local election officials State. So seats is very unique. Um, in total, including today's graduates, we have seen 42 participants go through the seats program. Um, we have a total, we've got 14 other people lined up as of right now to begin uh, in cohort five. And VSOP is clearly it's an interdisciplinary program at Ball State. Um, and, and really, if you kind of look across the, the people that we have in the program, it is you know, we've got everything, computer science, political science, English, and everything in between. So uh, very interdisciplinary. We're, we're proud of and our dedicated professional staff and students who make a great contribution for activities. So, again, you know, we're pleased to be here with you today for the, this important event. Uh, today marks the culmination of months of hard work. I've got to see a lot of it. It has put in a lot of work and effort um, by these seven individuals who are part of our fourth cohort of the SEEDS program. The SEEDS program has been made possible in large part by the tremendous support of the Secretary of State's office, who has provided scholarships to many of the SEEDS participants. Um, who are graduating today and who have graduated and, and, and people coming up. Uh, we would also like to thank the Indiana Election Division and the Election Election Assistance Commission for providing support to seats. And Jay has been on several of our panels. So we're, we're always grateful for that. Um, uh, and again, so they provide a lot of support to the seats program in helping um, VSOP educate election administrators on fundamental concepts, knowledge, and field techniques that are required of them. Additionally, as a program under the affiliation of Ball State University, VSTOP would like to thank President Burns, the College of Science and Humanities, Dean McCarthy, if you're here today, and I know Kevin is here, so thank you, Kevin. He's also been a, a huge supporter and, and critical to our success, and the political science and computer, political science and computer science departments in ensuring that SEATS program maintains Ball State's mission of engaging participants in educational research and creative endeavors that empower our graduates to have fulfilling careers and meaningful lives enriched by lifelong learning and service to their communities. Um, and another big thank you to Secretary of State uh, Morales for, for uh, being here today and, and President Rush for taking time uh, uh, to help us recognize and celebrate our cohort for graduates. With that, I'll turn it back over to Dr. Bobby. 
Uh, before we begin uh, the presentation of certificates, we have one more special guest speaker, Jay Phelps, a CEDS graduate from cohort one. Jay, who, Jay comes from Columbus, as, and he has previously served at the Bartholomew County Clerk, also as the Director of Elections for the Secretary of State, Holly Sullivan, and he's now the Director of Election Support and Technology Evaluation Program for the United States Election Systems Commission, EAC. Additionally, he has also been on the board of the Indiana Executive Council on Private Security along with his staff. And so in that sense, Jay and Jay and the V-Staff team go back quite a bit. <laughs> uh, and he's an old friend, uh, old quote unquote. Uh, Jay's been a big supporter of V-Staff and the CEAS program since 2018. And it's a great honor to have you here, uh, Jay, uh, for the graduation ceremony. I'm pleased to invite uh, Mr. Phelps to deliver this. Good morning. Uh, thank you, Dr. Bhagat, Dr. Kasala, President Burns, uh, fellow county clerks. I see my clerk always the clerk, election uh, administrators, um, Honorable Secretary of State um, Morales, and I got to say a big thank you to Gary Bonnet. Um, huge, uh, learned so much of him during my time as Secretary of State, and I don't think uh, the general public or even Clerk and election administrators realize uh, the amount of work that Jerry's put in uh, for our state uh, and the trends that he's pulled to make things happen um, over his years of service. It is so great to be here. Thank you for the opportunity to speak to you this morning. I will try to be brief um, in my remarks. Um, I had the uh, amazing opportunity to be a part of the Cohort 1 uh, CEASE program in 2019. Um, I think, I believe I received a letter or a phone call from then Secretary of State Connie Lawson. Um, describing the program and its goals and, and objectives. And I said, sure, wh why not? Um, and uh, I can only tell you that um, because of that seats uh, program, uh, it had a, a factor on where I am today. Um, as Dr. Bob, Bob has, uh, mentioned, um, I, I was our uh, county clerk in Columbus, Indiana, for for six and a half years and uh, worked with the Secretary of State's office for a year and a half as the director of election modernization. Now they still gave me a nice bureaucratic long title as uh, the EAC as the Director of Election Supporting Technology Evaluation Program and basically what that means is uh, coming up with standards and best practices for election supporting technology such as electronic poll books, voter registration systems, election not reporting databases, etc. Um, because uh, there's there really no standards in place and, and folks like here at eStop, we look at, we look at um, institutions such as these programs for, uh, for guidance on how to build um, our program at the federal level. Um, BSUP is uh, nationally known. Uh, when, when states reach out to us, I always say, oh, I've got to contact the BSUP. They would love to help you on how to build a full book certification program, for example. Um, but my uh, personal experience um, in 2019 with the SEATS program was, was eye opening. Uh, you know, in Bartholomew County, uh, you know, 80,000 people, um, 52,000 registered voters. Uh, had uh, one voting machine vendor, microvotes, and an electronic poll book uh, in uh, no week, but I had never really seen outside of the scope of how my county functioned and ran. And I was able to come up here um, with other election officials and county clerks and see how um, they ran their elections. Uh, what, what was their best practices and processes? I learned from them and, and we learned from each other. And then experts were brought in from uh, the, uh, the voting system technical laboratories that uh, the EAC accredits to be able to test voting machines, electronic poll books, which is a fascinating process. The first time I had ever learned really about uh, the work that goes into testing um, voting machines. And then um, had representatives from the EAC. Um, we heard, uh, uh, you know, of course, about the, uh, the uh, post-election audits, you know, a concept that I was unfamiliar with. And it really opened my eyes up to just how, um, how uh, magnificent and, and um, you know, all-encompassing the world of elections really is in our country. And uh, it uh, really impacted my day-to-day -day job on, uh, as county clerk in Bartholomew County and implementing some of those best practices. And uh, I just am so grateful for the opportunity to be a part of that class. 
and uh, kind of life lessons that I learned um, along the way. And uh, because of that SEATS program, um, it really allowed me to kind of branch out uh, even within the Corps Association and being on the legislative committee and serving uh, in on the executive board and, uh, as president my uh, final year. Um, just having that knowledge and having that uh, you know, the confidence. And, and as you know, time has moved on, um, even when people after 2020 would say, Jay, you know, what about Indian elections? Are they safe? Are they secure? And I can, I can look at them in the eyes and say, absolutely they are. Um, and that is uh, because of the great work that the uh, voting system voting system technical oversight program, the getting the Secretary of State, the getting election division, our general assembly and our county clerks, because the county clerks, as you know, are the boots on the ground, they're on the front lines. And at the EAC, we realized that and we're giving the resources to um, state election administrators and county clerks to be able to better do their job and to increase voter confidence. We have a long way to go and uh, things are not easy, but I certainly appreciate all the work that you all do. And I just wanna say congratulations um, on, your, on your graduation today. Uh, for the seats participants and um you know one thing i would just encourage is uh to you know hold your head high and, I, and you know i know the work is sometimes uh, like rakeen always says there's not a, after an election there's not a newspaper article that says great job county clerk but a successful election right um <laughs> and, you know they try to pick a part or there's a small matter that it's going into something and um and that doesn't hurt our cause right because not only are we county clerks right the election administrators we have the other offices that we administer on top of you know somewhat of an IT director and a communications director. So I totally understand uh, what you all are going through, but uh, I will just say the SEATS program has had a profound impact um, on, on my career and I wouldn't be here uh, sitting here in front of you without it. And um, just, you know, I can't say how um, how thankful I am to, to not only be in the role I am today, but to be, to be able to be a county clerk. You know, uh, a lot of people probably don't know this and uh, there was a room full of 100 people um, when I stepped down to take the role of the Secretary of State's office from, from being our county clerk. And it was one of the hardest things I ever had to do. I honestly felt like I was at a funeral. Um, I cried like I was, I was at the funeral uh, during the caucus to appoint uh, now a uh, county clerk Jerry Lentz. Uh, because, you know, I, I raised my family. I, you know, a lot of people try to keep the work life separate. I didn't, and I'm, and I, and I'm so glad I did it. Because my kids got to see firsthand why I was gone for 15 to 20 hours, you know, in the months of March through May and in September through November. They got to see the hard work or why is the, you know, why is the newspaper calling a pocket guide or why is people constantly uh, blowing up your <laughs> county Facebook page for absentee applications during the primary of 2020. They got to see the hard work that went into it and as we drove by the courthouse, their advice listened and lined up. But hey, that's dad's work. And I'm so proud of that. I'm so thankful. <coughs> Election day approached, I held each one of them up. My daughter being a little bit older, I said, well, her as much anymore, but they got to see the voting process uh, up here and how just important it is to steal the right to vote. Because as Secretary Morales said, we have to increase turnout. We have to make folks understand that this is um, not only their local community, state, and our country, but the impact that we make, the voices uh, that we have to, to be able to change uh, our future. And the SEATS program certainly changed my, my future. So grateful for it. Thank you for the opportunity to uh, say a few brief words. Uh, this morning, congratulations to our participants. Um, I wish you nothing but the best, and um, I tell you what, I'm uh, just grateful for the state of Indiana and the leadership you all show on the national level. So, thank you. Well, thank you again, Dave, for uh, 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 coming uh, to the graduation ceremony and making uh, very really inspirational. Uh, remarks for our uh, uh, seats graduates and uh, having Jay with us, uh, his expertise, of course, he's uh, 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 from cohort one, one of our first graduates, but also with all of his other expertise. Uh, we know we can always call upon you, Jay, and you've been on our panel since we hope to keep uh, uh, that association with you, and we thank you for that. Uh, Again, thank you everyone for your kind remarks and insights uh, into the Vista program. Uh, I uh, notice uh, that we, among others in, in our audience who have been recognized, uh, Dr. Brian Bias is here, and I would like to recognize Dr. Bias, Brian, a good friend, <coughs> who until recently was a co-director of Vista program, and he recently retired from the Department of Criminal Justice. Uh, but he's still associated with the university and the program in many
anyways. And and uh, Brian and and I and Chad are working on a book on uh, introduction to college and the history of the education. And so that association is uh, going. So it's now our pleasure to present certificates to the seven uh, distinguished graduates from the fourth cohort of this year's program. Uh, we are delighted to be awarding our fourth cohort of the seeds participants with these certificates, which symbolize months of hard work, the creation of a capstone project, and each graduate's commitment and dedication to Indiana elections. Over the course of this cohort of the seeds program, each participants each of the participants completed 170 hours of educational work in the form of lectures, discussions, assignments, hands-on workshops, and the capstone project. I'm going to call upon Dr. Kinsella uh, to start that process. Thanks again, Dr. Mogget. So again, you could not be prouder um, of the professionals uh, for their perseverance, dedication, and commitment to the program. It, it to take a lot of you guys have you know personal life, professional life, and then did this on top of that, all of those other things. So we'll now present the certificates that they're signed by um, Secretary of State Morales, President Burns, um, the IED co-directors, uh, uh, Brad King and uh, Angie, Angie Nussmeyer, and um, the, the two co-directors, Dr. Baga, and he got my the nicest signature I was able to muster. So uh, anyway. Um, so as your names are called, your certificate will be displayed on the screen, and you may come up to the front of the room and retrieve your certificate. We'll have a photographer present to capture the moment when you receive uh, your hard-earned certificate. Um, so we'd like to in invite um, Secretary Morales to come up and join us in presenting the, the certificates. All right, Ellie Barton. Ellie is an administrative assistant for Bingo County. Deborah Mary. Deborah is an elected official to search for Wayne County. Bianca Blessing. Bianca is the election deputy for Allen County. Jackson Kensel. Jackson is deputy clerk for Vigo County. Rebecca Rauch. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Rebecca is an assistant director for Porter County. <laughs> Carol Smith. Carol is the chief deputy of, and of administration elections for Elkhart County. <laughs> And then we also have Gracie York. Uh, Gracie was unable to attend, but she is the judicial clerk in Vermilion County. Join me in recognizing the accomplishments of graduates to the round of applause. We 
We will now transition to the first half of the presentation portion of the transition session. These presentations will allow the seats participants to demonstrate their hard work over the past few months and what they have accomplished with their capstone projects. I will now turn it over to Lisa to proceed with the capstone project. As you all know, the SEATS program stands for the Certificate in Election Administration, Technology, and Security. Our participants go through months of training in handling election and technology currently being used to help ensure that they have knowledge of the fundamental concepts and field techniques required of election administrators. As a part of their program, these participants have engaged in a capstone project intended to demonstrate their knowledge obtained throughout the course while also giving back to their community. Each capstone project tackles a problem our participants have identified and allows them to come up with a solution to addressing it in their county. Each, progress, each project is rigorously evaluated by the VSTOP team and co-directors prior to final approval. With that being said, I believe it is fair to see simply how the capstone projects were completed by hearing it from the sources themselves. It is now my pleasure to invite Deborah Berry to the front of the room to give her presentation on full worker training. You know, we were able to talk and pull some of our notes and ask things, and I thought this would be a great opportunity for our events. So, thank you, Dr. Bob, and these stuff for pushing me to keep me on the course um, with the Capstone Project. So, my Capstone Project um, is about co worker training. In Wayne County, um, we had some issues with. Um, problems with recruiting co-workers. That pool of co-workers seems to be getting smaller and smaller. So um, that was one problem that we had. And then problems with co-workers retaining instructions after our training sessions. Um, always previously, we had set up those training sessions um, to enable the brief um, classroom um, videos or those types of things that film in then just had that speaker who would speak at those. And we found out that um, they were not retaining the information when they got to the voting centers. We had problems with co-workers not being knowledgeable and unable to assist voters, creating a lot of voter confusion and frustration at the polling places. So our goals were to have co-workers who could serve more knowledgeably and provide co-workers with a detailed job description that accurately depicts what is expected from each co-worker, and to provide co-workers with training in group sessions and personal individual training if necessary. We put into place our action plan, and we organized classroom sessions for each co-worker position, rather than just um, you know going over a brief job description, um, be there at 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. for early voting and 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. We actually went in and did an organized classroom session. So cross-training co-worker sessions were conducted successfully by hands-on with the voting equipment and video materials that were distributed. Both videos and printed material from the vendors that used and distributed at the training session workers required to attend um, any scheduled training. The different methods that we used, clerks and judges were cross-trained to enable more knowledge of duties. Um, creating voters by cross-training co-workers solved Wayne County's issues of a shortage of co-workers we needed for alternates and or emergencies. So we took like the judges and clerks and cross-trained them so that um, because of 
um, being able to give co-workers breaks, like for lunch, restroom breaks. We always had a floater who could give you know, a clerk or a judge um, that break, means that we have to have the bipartisan um, parties represented for each position at the full centers. The conclusion, Wayne County achieved the goals intended to broaden the pool of whole week workers, creating an online whole worker application for screening workers prior to training helps to divide new co-workers from returning co-workers and know the needed areas of training. And that reflects back to what I was talking about, um, how we speak with other county clerks and develop collaboration to find out what they're doing in their counties. And then um, SEATS helps us um, to perfect that by giving us suggestions and those types of things once um, we submit them. Online sessions, in-person discussions, and tests following the courses to see if the co-workers actually do retain or know what is expected of them. Co-worker training information provided from the Secretary of State's office um, is a tool that we always distribute at our training sessions. And in collaboration with other SEATS participants using their shared best practices was also very helpful. In Given those tools. So at the end of um, my presentation, I'll uh, just basically give the information, the contact information, and this is provided to our co workers on our um, website where they fill out an application submitted electronically. Um, and then after they have served, we give them a survey. We call survey out and they return it. And we have um, meetings with our um, different staff at each location and they give us feedback of where we need to work and where any needs for us. <coughs> any questions? Okay, thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Deborah, for that great presentation. Next up is Bianca Blessing presenting Exploring Mega Centers in Allen County. Hello, my name is Bianca Blessing. I am from Allen County. I am an election deputy for Allen County. Um, I am one of two, and I am either our assistant director and director. Um, the title of my project is Exploring the Idea of Moving the Mega Centers in Allen County. First off, some background information on Allen County. Allen is one of the larger counties in Indiana. The population is approximately 388,000. Currently, we have 278 precincts. And the next, we're going to discuss the problem that Allen County is facing. The issue Allen County is facing is a large amount of polling locations. In the 2022 general election, we had 114 polling locations. We did reduce our number of polling locations this year to 111. This municipal election, we have 81 polling locations, and 79 of these locations are in Fort Wayne alone. Many locations are small buildings, have small boat rooms, or small parking lots. Some locations have a low voter turnout as well. Others are less populated or in more rural areas. We would also like to combine lower voter turnout areas or locations into one large location, a mega center. An abundance of locations hinders the election administrative process, such as more poll workers required to staff the locations, providing the necessary supplies to the locations, and delivering them takes more time for us, the election board, more effort for us, and also for our freight companies who deliver the supplies to the locations. And the limited capacity means that only one large precinct or multiple small precincts can be assigned to one location. Some areas need the number of locations reduced, while other areas are experiencing some population growth in the county, and we need more or larger locations. 
it is more desirable for Allen County to have more large locations rather than several small locations for the reasons I listed earlier. Due to the size of the county, our number of precincts, potential ballot styles, and the limitations of our equipment, we are focusing on gaining mega centers first. If mega centers are successful in Allen County, then we can work on moving to both centers in the future. And after identifying the problem that we had in Allen County, then the goals of the project were established. The primary goal was to explore to moving to mega centers in Allen County. Um, research did need to be done on how to move to mega centers and the best options for our county. Mega centers will give us the ability to combine multiple precincts into one large building. Combining multiple precincts into one mega center would make for a more efficient use of full workers' time, require less supplies, and make delivery more simplified for us. A way to achieve this primary goal was to develop a written proposal. The proposal's objective was to advocate why we need to use a building as a voting location on election day. Schools being the first location to focus on sending the proposal. We want to address any concerns that the schools had in the past, such as security. In many areas of Allen County, schools are the only option when it comes to buildings that are large enough, but are also ADA accessible for any people with um, disabilities, uh, mobility issues, things like that. In the future, the proposal can be expanded upon to be used to recruit other buildings and locations. Then an action plan needed to be created to keep the project on schedule. The first step for the project was to research and discuss with the election board where we need locations the most or mega centers the most. In addition, what buildings to use for mega centers needed to be determined. We decided to recruit schools to use as locations again as the first mega centers. Schools were used in the past, but they have since dropped out. Um, the first step was figuring out how to implement or recruit locations. The solution was to develop the written proposal. Since there wasn't a current written proposal to go off, research needed to be done on how to write a written proposal. An outline was created to help structure the proposal. The written proposal advocates why we need to use schools as mega centers. After the proposal is written, the next step was reviewing the written proposal. Once the proposal is reviewed, then it can be finalized and finally sent out to schools. After the proposals are sent, then we can track and evaluate the success of the proposal. The idea is to keep a list or spreadsheet of who was sent the proposal and if they were um, denied or gained as a location. The spreadsheet will help in comparing old locations to new locations and also evaluating the success of the proposal. And next, um, we'll discuss the methods that were used during the project. For the most part, the flow of the action plan did stay the same, um, but some research did need to be done as needed. The proposed schedule had to be modified, so some dates did have to be extended. Currently, the project is at the review stage of the written proposal, and there were discussions with the Allen County Election Board staff about what locations in Allen County and what kinds of buildings to focus on. The northwest area of the county was determined to focus on first, since it has seen the most growth, 0.9% from April 1st, 2020 to July 1st, 2021. Schools are large enough to accommodate elections and are also ADA accessible, as previously mentioned. Also, the only buildings available in many areas of the county for use, um, such as our more rural areas. The first schools for us to focus on would be Carroll School Pro Corporations, preferably using their middle schools. How we are going to keep the students safe was a major point to emphasize in the the ideal option would be for the school to do an e-learning day on election day. As Allen County grows in population, the written proposal can be expanded upon to be used on other buildings and locations. And in conclusion, to summarize what was completed, research was done to learn more about Allen County moving to mega centers. It was determined where polling locations were needed and what locations um, Allen County wanted to focus on. A draft of written proposal for schools was done. Due to time restraints and other election day duties, the written proposal has not been sent to any schools at this time. It will be a continuous process to get the proposal developed and complete enough to be sent out to school corporations. The proposal is an asset that can be expanded upon and used by the election board for many election cycles in the future. 
not only will Mega Centers help Allen County currently, but it will also assist the county in hopefully transitioning to a vote centers in the future. And the seats principles and tools that I used for the duration of a project um, assisted me in helping me complete my goals, um, that they provide an overall better understanding of what being an election administrator means, discussions about both centers and their advantages and disadvantages um, were able to translate to um, mega centers. Knowing how to better communicate with co-workers will assist the transition to mega centers. Learning more about election security was beneficial to developing the written proposal. And I have up there a list of all the references that I used during the duration of my project. A lot of them were how to. And lastly, I would like to give thanks to my director and co-workers for their support and assistance during the project. And in addition, I would like to thank the B-Stop and Seeds team for their support during the process as well. Excellent presentation, Bianca. Before we take a brief intermission, we will have one more presentation, which will be a group presentation. Haley Bartlett and Jackson Kinsel from Vigo County will be presenting Media Management Guide, Helping County Clerks Combat Disinformation. Um, we did media management guide. Um, we figured out that there are a lot of clerks who come into their position literally never being in politics. Um, it's they don't know how to handle media, and it can cause a lot of confusion. Um, so one thing that we decided was we want to be able to help create a guide that they can reference at the beginning while they're still getting to their position. Really good. Uh, terms to understand. Uh, we noticed that a lot of people get things confused between disinformation, misinformation, and malinformation. Disinformation is false, but not created or shared with the intention of causing harm. We figured out that a lot of times that's what happens with media. They're not necessarily trying to get the information wrong, they just don't necessarily understand the process. So having a guide that allows clerks to talk to media, figure out how they can get the information out to the public appropriately helps. Misinformation is deliberately caused to mislead. Um, we don't believe that is what media does. And then malinformation is based on fact that is used out of context to mislead. We also don't believe that's what their intent is. So uh, next, what's the problem? So we started out our project as kind of combating disinformation and misinformation, and then we kind of switched it. We thought, well, wouldn't it be a lot easier if clerks just had a guide to deal with the media, maybe some steps that they can take and things like that. Um, and one example that really caught was the catalyst of us changing our project was school board candidate filings. So school board candidate filings, we all know, happen on the general election, um, but they have to get like 10 signatures in their district, and they all have to be verified by voter registration. Well, in Vigo County, we have a separate voter registration office. So when we had three um, signature sheets turned in in one day, the school or the media automatically assumed that three filings were official, and that was not the case. They Signatures still had to be verified, and all their information still had to be verified before they were officially filed. Um, so that was interesting. One media outlet reported that 20 candidates were official and filed, and then the list we posted that night only had two. So that was some fun phone calls from the public and candidates. Um, and then, so the actual performance of our project is still to be determined. We're still working on this manual and kind of working out all the kinks and really what works best for our county and communicating with the media. And then our goal, um, so really our main goal is to combat disinformation and to make sure that the most accurate information is getting out to the public and getting out to the media. So, 
So we really did a lot of research. Um, there was a big old website. I'm sure it's in our references, but that had a whole bunch of different tabs of like history of the media, media relations. So we did a bunch of research into that um, just to figure out. And we talked to some former government officials about how they dealt with media. So it was really interesting and really eye opening, too. And then, you know, our major plan is just to create a guide that we can distribute to any Indiana clerk or really any government official to use to communicate with the media. So the next slide is our guide um, as it is right now. So um, it has the table of contents show you, shows you basically what it has in it. There's an introduction, there's definitions, um, there's history of the media, uh, what a media pre-brief is, uh, point of contact, plan of action, how to utilize social media, and then resources that clerks can contact if this doesn't cover it all. Um, and it was just like a culmination of everything that we pretty much researched and found. Um, yeah, we're still working on that, but it is, uh, we're still working on it. It's working. And then our plan of action, um, we spent early months in research. Um, we were researching a lot of articles where um, media has put out information that was incorrect. Um, that kind of, that's how we started. And then when we changed to having a guide, it kind of changed our whole action plan. Then we uh, started putting together a proactive and responsive guide. So, you know, if, let's say our paper doesn't work and we have to recreate thousands of ballots, how can the clerk's office deal with the media and public um, trying to coordinate together to make sure the public doesn't think that we're doing something nefarious? Um, we, yeah, put it together. we did not expect to be able to put it in until primary of 2024, but I think we're going to be able to do it in the general of this year's election. Um, we just want to compare how media understood the process and past articles, how they translate the information to the public. We want the information we give them to translate in layman's terms, which is what our goal is. And then the methods that would be used um, in this guide is just to have a single contact for media in the clerk's office of who they can contact with election questions. That way they're not talking to Haley as the administrative assistant and then she has to transfer them to me and absentee voters. And then, so that way they just aren't getting the runaround because then they're going to get frustrated and then they're most not, likely not going to take in all the information we're giving to them. And then to have a plan of action. So if the media were to release information that wasn't necessarily accurate, developing a plan of how your office would handle that first you need to identify. Um, and then a lot of the... Um, like former public relations individuals that we talked to mentioned reaching out to the person that wrote that article first instead of jumping straight to the editor because it, and then asking them to make an update to the story. Because if you ask them to make a correction, then they have to go to their editor and it has to be listed, released, whatever they corrected this day, and they have to list those corrections. And we were told a lot of media personnel do not like that. So it was best to ask them to do an update. And then we do a lot of work on our social media of informing the public about deadlines for voter registration, uh, like voting centers and different deadlines like that. And then we're just going to keep continuing to improve our manual as situations arise. Every day, it seems like you turn your head and there's something new in the clerk's office. So each time we come to a new situation, we'll be able to update that manual. And then for our conclusion, um, like Haley said, we plan to be able to use this for this general election. I know it says primary 2024, but that's changed a little bit. Um, and then pretty much the timeline of events is when elections take place in the schedule for the state of Indiana. So which you know, we might change this depending on which elections are on the ballot or which offices are on the ballot this year. Um, it'd be different for like school board, what we tell the media for school board offices, so you really have to curate it to different offices. And then the seats, principles, and tools that we used 
Um, there was a webinar of communication strategies and promoting trusted election information. Um, it's basically told us how to reach out to public uh, trusted sources. Different communities trust different sources. So if you can get the information to those sources, they can get it out to their people and the people are going to listen to them much more than they might you. Um, then we have the elections in the EAC. Um, we added a lot of that information into our guide, especially as a resource. Um, how did how Indiana safeguards elections? Um, Connie Lawson, former Secretary of State, gives information on what Indiana does um, to ensure elections are safe, and that information also can go out to the public. And then voter fraud myths, basic myths that clerks should be aware of to combat this information. And then a summary of studies done showing voter fraud is not rampant like we sometimes hear. Yeah. And then we've got our references that we used. And that concludes our presentation. <laughs> Thank you, Haley and Jackson, and great work to the both of you. We will now have a brief intermission before we complete the remaining capstone project presentation. Please feel free to enjoy the refreshments at outside. I'm sure you saw them when you were walking in. If you need to leave the event early, please feel free to do so during this time. We will be reconvening um, in 15 minutes. I'm not really sure what time it is. It's about 10 after. 11.30. 11.30, yes, that's what we had planned, so we're on track. Um, we will also be having some cake during this time, and if we would like to take some pictures, you're also more than welcome to do that as well. So we will reconvene at 11.30. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I think there's a lot. I think there's a lot to
This one was on my desk. Yeah. I put it on. I agree. Did you see? Yeah, I I think tickets go on sale next Monday. I'm like, wow. Yeah. Is he coming close? Are they coming uh, close? Uh, St. Louis and Chicago. Me and an editor. Yes. Yeah. 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 And Jay's youngest, I, I, I you know, I have a, I can hear black are yeah. just a few days black around the That's what I'm talking about. That album. 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 That and then um, and I still help her even though I'm not being paid for that, which yeah. is fine. And now I'm teaching a class right now. But that's it. I think that's it. Uh, I'm also following their ass. I know, I wanted to. <laughs> I'm just, okay. just going to point that out and yeah. leave that thought yeah. there. You're right. I mean, not that we're trying to get rid of you. You're right. Right. Exactly. Good to see you. Take care. Starting next month. Yeah, I just started that. Yeah, it helps. Uh, it's, yeah, it's essentially the same class oh, I teach. Oh, you. Uh, how are you? I'll help piece together. I'll see you. Oh, you I have some too. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But there's a loophole that we really yeah. don't have to do it. It's, it's interesting. Yeah. 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 Uh, so, so, yeah, was it still going? Yeah, yeah, yeah they didn't yeah, pause it for the other. Yeah, here our right. conversation about nothing, basically. I don't know if there is like a pause button. I've never streamed on YouTube. So I, yeah, I, don't really I, know. I actually met him when he was the dean of uh, Teachers College. Nice guy. Yeah. 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 I met him through Roy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Nice, nice. Yeah. Really nice. Very, very great 
and um, and Susanna's gone. I didn't think she was. Yeah. Right. Well, she has she has many more future opportunities. Do you want to get some uh, coffee or something? I need some water. Or something. <laughs> Everybody. 
us be invited to the local news stations and we were on the news and we cannot go to the next page without scrolling it. It's still that's why. So we did change that. Well, so that's the way that they did it. They only had one contest. Oh, okay. So the way it was before it was like the county sheriff, county commissioner, county council on one day and you go from there. So then it went to the county sheriff, county commissioner. But luckily we timed it. And the Saturday Thank you. 
Again, the surveys were sent out, and the surveys will go out again. Um, the other materials from other counties reviewed and identified what can be focused on more, and then finding things that we may have repeating that aren't necessarily as important as the things we are experiencing, like provisionals being issued for the wrong reason or not any reason given. Um, also focusing more on the duties expected of them and um, I wanted to initially create an online interactive program, I guess, to try to offer an online solution for training instead of it, like as an extra option, one or the other, you can attend in class or do instructional videos and interactive content. Um, so I was researching different programs that could accomplish this or software and through different vendors that have this ability to. I feel like I keep <laughs> saying the same thing, but we reviewed survey results, sending out new surveys. Um, all the research that was received gave new ideas of what to try to include in the future. Um, sometimes I feel like even just changing the way the presentation looks to update that keeps it new and interesting. Uh, the videos, again, I feel like I've done a lot of it. Um, we did meet with a vendor that offers an online training software. So that is a big step towards this project. Um, we did actually purchase it, and we will be creating it over the summer to hopefully implement in the general election. So it'll be an option for training if there's workers that don't want to attend the full three-hour course that we hold in person. This software will allow them to take tests on the computer, view videos that they can also have for future use. Um, it tracks uh, attendance, so you can see if they were, you know, actively into the program, how long, what time they logged onto it, when they took a test, what grades they had on the test. So originally, that was what I was hoping I could create on my own, but I learned that that's well beyond my <laughs> capabilities. I was optimistic, but I have trouble with PowerPoint. So, <laughs> um, and in conclusion, my failure at creating it myself, but like I said, the positive is that we did make the purchase of software that accomplishes close to the same. Um, and then, it obviously takes a lot longer than you think in the beginning, too. So it, it, this has not been fully created or implemented, but it is in the works. I have lots and lots of notes of all the research that I've found, um, different video ideas, and just I downloaded presentations from other counties, too, with you know notes on certain pages of things that I found that might be useful to try to, I don't want to say train them better, but to revamp it in a, in a new way so that hopefully it'll capture their attention again. And then there was lots of different reading assignments that we had through this class, and that gave me access to links that I didn't necessarily know existed. So through those different sites, I found lots of useful information on best practices and what other counties do. And then <clears throat> also got to learn a lot from the different vendors out there. So I know someone says when you're in your bubble of what you use and what you're used to, you don't realize how different even the county next to you can be in the way that they, they run elections, the way they train, the way their equipment works. So it was all very useful and I'm really glad that I took this course 
And I would say the best part, though, was hearing everyone else's experiences and feedback and what you guys experience and how you handle certain issues. And a lot of times you don't realize that there's alternative ways to handle common problems or you have certain things that you encounter that we haven't. So it was just very eye-opening and insightful. And <laughs> Thank you, Rebecca, for your fantastic presentation. Our next presentation and last in-person presentation will be from Carol Smith about election administrators, the beginning basics. So my um, entire project was a wee bit different in the fact that I remember when I first started in the election world, I was totally, totally green. And uh, what I was given to look at was way above anything I could comprehend. Um, so my goal was to create some type of manual that would just be the bare basics of of getting started. And I use the term learn the facts um, because early on, one of our speakers at SEEKS talked about the importance of knowing facts. So I use the facts as um, the layout for how my manual would be. So the framework of an election, <coughs> accessibility to your voters, uh, a cause and effect, threats, and then the spirit of elections. And then the final piece of the manual will be acronyms because they would say things like FWAB in the office, and I had absolutely no idea what they were saying, let alone know what it means. So the acronyms is um, the final piece of the manual uh, where they're listed and broken down. Um, so then, so the glimpse of beginning the journey. Um, I feel like the election administrators have to make a choice right from the get-go um, about the personal choices you're going to make, the uh, level of integrity you want to um, have as an election administrator, where will you give a little, where will you not. Um, media plays into that. So the goal is making sure that you know the facts of being an election administrator, the integrity involved, uh, the accessibility to your voters, the security, and bottom line is the meaning of why you do what you do. So uh, that was kind of my start, my layout of my manual. Um, and then we all have to have an action uh, and a commitment and the dependability to see an election to the very end, and I will let you know that we are still fighting general election 2022. And it is not done for us by any way, shape, or form. So you have to be committed that you're going to follow it all the way to the end, regardless of how long that may take. Um, so it's it, in the term of for an election administrator is a lifetime. Um, once you're in. You kind of get, maybe, um, and it becomes a lifetime commitment that with the knowing of the adaptability. Um, things change, laws change, dynamics in a county can change. Um, and so you have to be willing to, to view the entire process um, when you step in to be a clerk um, or an election administrator. So the first is the framework of an election. Uh, an election administrator um, sets the entire landscape for an election. And if I'm not talking just election equipment and voters. Um, your candidates, your ballots, your staff dealing with the media, your voter registration office, your funding, what supplies you're going to need, how quickly you can get them. Um, all of that needs to be looked at. Um, so I gave in the manual just a very basic touch on some of these things that in the beginning I didn't know. Um, I wasn't aware that the election office has to set their budget for themselves. So I, 
how much balance of it will cost and how many you're going to need based on turnout. So all that was new to me. So in the manual, I just touched briefly on those points um, to give someone that's totally new to the election world um, some type of basis to understand um, the things that you have to look at way before. We talked about that in seats that we're already planning for presidential and we are way outside of any timeline that people have a clue. Uh, but we're already discussing budget, um, what our registered voters are going to look at, what we think turnout's going to be, because we have to know how many ballots to order. All of that comes into play. Um, so just knowing that little bit of tidbit without being overwhelming is part of me. And then accessibility to voters. Um, and I'm not talking just those in a wheelchair. Because that's stuff that everybody thinks of, but it's how heavy are the doors? Um, you know, can, can someone with poor eyesight manage? Can someone that's totally blind manage? How do you accommodate for them? Um, how do you make voting more accessible to them? Um, and we are very fortunate in Oak Park County that a blind person can do an audio problem. Um, we're a little proud of that when people call in and say, oh, I have my hands blind and done with that. Nope, we can accommodate that. We can have her do an audio problem. So um, the next step was cause and effect, because we all know every action has some type of effect. And if you say the wrong thing to media, um, you don't read the right resources, all of that can have an effect to your election. So I just touched briefly on that in the manual so that someone totally new coming in would have a slight View without it being overwhelming of some of the things that we have to consider, we have to look at the different um, laws and stuff that come into play, um, guidelines from Secretary of State, um, you know, the Indiana Code when it comes to your candidates and your campaign finance. There's a, a whole gamut of things that I had was part of any of an election. So I touched uh, briefly on all that in the manual. And again, the manual was just that, brief. It's not giving anybody overwhelming details that they can't comprehend, but giving them some basis of what an election administrator goes through to make an election happen. And then there's always the threats. Um, and the new one, you know, the new biggest threat is cybersecurity. So I touched briefly on that in the manual. and. Um, the biggest guide that to everything is, of course, our constitution um, and the right that a voter has and the democracy of an election. And lastly, in the manual, it's spirit and soul of an election. Um, and for me, um, that keeps me coming back in the office is when I talk to somebody and they are 103 years old, but they are so determined that they are going to vote because they have been voting since they were 18 and they're not going to give it up other than that. That is the soul that makes an election worker constantly coming back for those 15 hour days in order to make an election happen and keep that democracy. Um, so then the, um, the looks of travel board, um, you know, going into facilities and, and helping those folks, maybe they, <clears throat> don't understand fully what they're doing, but they know that it's their right to vote and they want to make sure it happens. So I appreciate that fact um, in Elkhart County that we still are able to do that. And then the acronyms um, that can be so overwhelming when you begin your work in the election office and they're rattling this stuff off and you're like, absolutely no clue what they're talking about, but maybe you're too embarrassed to ask. Um, or, you know, maybe feel like it's not your place to ask. So in the manual, I just broke out um, some acronyms that are thrown around on a regular basis, um, not just department and tools, but, um, you know, every little aspect that you might hear on a regular basis. And in the manual, it actually became more than um, two pages of acronyms. Um, so it's a lot that we use on a regular basis. Um, so 
So it's having a brief little glimpse into the acronyms when you first start so that it's not quite so embarrassing when you ask things like what the heck is a blob. Um, so that's part of the manual as well. And then um, at the very end, it's, I did appreciate being part of the program. Um, some of it more enjoyable than others, of course, because some of it I kind of already knew. Um, but then there was other parts that it was like, oh, not really. Um, it, so I did appreciate the CP program and all that was involved in that. And um, I have actually recommend it to some others in healthcare planning um, and they're planning on doing it during our office. Very Thank you, Carol, for your incredible presentation. I think we can all relate that there's a lot of acronyms out there, so we can for sure appreciate that in your guide. Um, but now, but not least, we will be hearing from Gracie York from Vermillion County, conversion to vote center. So as mentioned previously, Gracie had prior obligations and had re recorded her presentation at an earlier date. So we just have a short little video and then we will have concluding remarks. Okay, so I will just go ahead and get started then. My name is Gracie York. I am the clerk in Vermillion County. And the project that I decided to do was convert <coughs> the precinct to vote centers. Um, currently, in Vermillion County is precinct based. We have uh, 17 precincts and 14 polling locations. With the length of our county, it somewhat makes sense, but it also makes the cost extremely high for our elections to continue to try to maintain this type of voting. So, I think moving towards finding a way to make voting more accessible while reducing the cost is going to be what's best for the county. Um, on election day, we have a total of 74 workers. And just for election day alone, this cost us with location poll workers and food, $15,400. This doesn't include any of our um, maintenance agreements with microphone or knowing none of the other costs incurred just election day alone. If we moved to vote centers, I would like to reduce to seven locations in the county and reduce our number of four workers to 39. There are some locations that I would like to have more um, four workers than others due to the volume of voting that we have at those. And this would reduce our cost to $8,870 just for election day. Um, project goals. In order to make the transition, we need to make sure all the voters have proper notice of the transition. I put together two different options based on cost on notifying the 10,755 registered voters that we have in the county. The most cost efficient option would be to, and postcards, um, those would be from Vistaprint. That would include the cost of postage, not just the postcards alone. Here is my schedule for 2025. I didn't think that it would be smart for our county to try to make this change during a presidential election. Um, so I kind of set up our timeline for 2025 and hopes that we can get it all accomplished on that off year. Um, the next steps, I've had discussions with the election board of making the change to the county. They all seem on board with reducing the cost and getting information to the voters to see how they feel about it. Um, the party chairs, I've mentioned it. They seem somewhat on board, but I, I won't know for sure until we actually get down to making those decisions. And then 
Number three, I would like to make the goal for myself to get the opinion from the public. So I'm kind of looked at reaching out to the newspaper and maybe writing a couple of um, articles about vote centers to see what people know about it. Just get questions coming into the office to see what information I need to get out to the public so they have more knowledge and can be more educated on it. <coughs> Um, my action plan, <laughs> there were a lot of different publications throughout trying to complete this. Every time I felt like I was making progress, I had a change in my election board um, that hasn't um, made it easy <laughs> by any means. I did have the expectation that it would be less complicated than what it became. But I'm appreciative of everything that I learned throughout it. And the best data collection that I found for us was cross comparison through prior years. Um, just because I think that's the only way for us to really compare is to know what we've spent in prior years and kind of just continue to compare based off of that. Following the action plan, it's been followed to the best of my ability, um, and I hope to continue the progress and meet that schedule that I laid out. Um, I will now see the company that we're at the people to who started the project, let alone get this far. Um, again, just the methods you used was comparing for prior elections. I would have liked to have been farther and in a position to implement the centers, but unfortunately, that's just not how it went. So we'll just keep going and work towards that end goal. Um, and my goals going forward I'm going to review the vote center plans from other counties to learn size to us again. I'm going to reach out to the county attorney to get his help with writing ours. I think that would be the best to make sure that we're in compliance with everything because it's easier to have a lot of eyes on it rather than just going offline. Um, try to make a plan to get with the public to get the public's opinion and begin to think of any potential negatives of making this transition. Um, tools that helped. I think overall everything just kind of helped with my knowledge because I am obviously a little bit newer to Indiana. I haven't lived here all of my life, so learning election law and all of those things was very new to me and it provided a lot of information that I wouldn't have without the program, so that's something I'm super thankful for. And the uh, resources that you guys provided as well. You've been very helpful with questions and all of that. So that's, that's all I've got. An awesome job to grace the Younger Capstone Project. Let's all give our presenters a round of applause. That now concludes the presentation portion of today's graduation ceremony. Congratulations to each of you once again for all of the hard work you have put in this year. Before we adjourn, we will now turn to the VSOP program co-directors for some final concluding remarks. Thanks, Lisa. Um, again, great job by um, all of the presenters. Really appreciate it. You did a fabulous job, so it, it was great to see. Um, we wanted to really thank everyone who attended today. Greatly appreciate you coming out. I know it's, as uh, President Mary said, it's only once a year, that it's in Muncie. Anyway, um, 
it, it is spring in Indiana, so uh, in the Midwest, so it, it, it's a rough day to be out. But thank you again for coming out. Um, uh, so uh, let's see. I'd like to thank all the everyone who attended um, and supported the graduates, and for all the resources that came from the university, from the college, and, and our individual departments, political science and computer science, for for all that they put in, and all of those, especially the VSTOP team who assisted in facilitating the graduation ceremony. And with that, I'll turn it over to you, Dr. Bobbitt. Uh, of course, we uh, talked about the VSTAR team and the introductions, but uh, we really want to single out uh, Lisa Gray. Uh, very special thanks to Lisa, uh, our VSTAR graduate assistant. Uh, she works mainly with the SEEDS program, but helps out in other aspects too. And she's the one who organized this event. Uh, thank you for your time and effort to make this event possible. Uh, and thanks to the staff team again for helping set up. Uh, we, we, we really work as a team and, 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 and everyone, everyone helps out. Uh, and Marisa, of course, I took the lead in this event. So that's great. In the morning, we mentioned uh, uh, a number of stakeholders that we have for the VSTAR. Uh, and, and some that we would like to especially thank are our VSTAR uh, external partners. Indiana uh, our external partners, of course, include the Indiana Secretary of State's Office, the Indiana Election Division, and the U.S. Election Systems Commission, but also Baker TV and Civics. And, and we constantly work with them for all the areas of election administration, certification, and testing, and such. Uh, we staff would like to uh, convey our gratitude to these two players for their ongoing and continued support. Uh, the SEEDS program is successful because of all of your guidance. And many of these stakeholders and staff from uh, these organizations have been on panels and SEEDS graduates will know that you heard presentations from them. And we continue to look forward uh, to work with these to ensure uh, your election integrity and increasing voter confidence. Thank you. I think you have some final remarks, please, uh, about the logistics of the next part of it. Thank you. All right, I promise I'm almost done talking. So before we adjourn, I would like to introduce cohort five, a few of which are with us today. We look forward to beginning the next cohort in May and watching these election professionals expand their knowledge over the course of the next year. Next year at the same time, we will be hopefully celebrating the completion of 14 more graduates. VSTOP and the SEATS program are honored to be able to empower Hoosier election administrators to create public value and election integrity within their community. With that, we have reached the conclusion of the graduation ceremony of the fourth cohort of the SEATS program. Thank you all for attending and to our participants. We wish you the best of luck with your current and future careers in election. Congratulations to each of you once again for all of your hard work and for everything that you have put into the SEATS program. I know it was not easy at times. <laughs> Please don't hesitate to reach out to VSOP if you ever need anything from us or have any questions. We are always willing to offer your, your assistance. Before everyone leaves, could you all have could we all have the graduates approach the front of the room for a group photo? After the photo, we will be having a brief open house. Everybody is welcome to enjoy more refreshments and then tour the cage, which is where we store equipment, records, and some rewinders. And I hope you all have a great rest of your Friday. Hope you stay dry <laughs> and have a wonderful weekend. Congratulations again. Thank you.